everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on. I hope everybody is having an unbelievable day. Uh, it's been real busy for me. Uh, voice is a little raspy. Uh, got into one of those male debates at the cigar shop last. Wow, sorry about that. The cigar shop last night. And, you know, friendly banter, but you know how guys are when they debate in sports and everything else. So, uh, still haven't recovered from that, but I'm good. And uh, what I want to talk about here is a little bit, well, a lot more serious and something that we really need to grasp. Uh, as always, I want to remind you that we are in the middle of a fundraiser for the work we do in the community, everything from Black Men Lead, uh, Restoring Ghetto's Forgotten Daughter, uh, which is my wife, Mary. Um, the uh, Music is Life program, uh, wraparound services, mental health services, and a bunch of other things we've been doing for years. Uh, but uh, the thing we are really focusing on now is our most underfunded program, which is Black Men Lead, which is probably the most needed program, especially when it comes to socializing young black males into into manhood. Sorry about that. Uh, this street right here is not friendly at all, but it's the quickest route to where I'm trying to get to and I'm in a hurry. Uh, so this video probably will not be long. But uh, we definitely need your support and I can't stress that enough. Uh, I love all of the uh, supporting and encouraging comments I get and, and, and messages and and all of that, and it's good. But I told you guys a long time ago, I'm not into this to have my ego stroke. I don't need anybody to tell me anything about myself uh, to make me feel good about myself. I'm in this because I think I have something to offer. I think that I put enough work and research in it to understand it enough to offer some solutions. I don't come talking about problems without bringing solutions. That's what I do. The Black Man Lead Rite of Passage Initiative is a solution to African-American adolescent young adult male violence, uh, in, uh, mass incarceration, African-American poverty, the destruction of the black family nucleus, and so much more. Uh, I've presented uh, this in a number of different volumes and books, uh, articles and everything. So if you really want to understand why I'm so passionate about it, my work is out there and it explains it. But we need it. We need it desperately and we need your support. With that out of the way, let's stay on our children for a while. And I'm not going to be long with this. Let's stay on our children for a while. Up in New York, a mother has been charged with murder for beating her nine-year-old daughter to death. A two-hour beating, from what I understand. Now, while you probably can find some indirect link where white supremacy can be an influence on this, just trauma being passed down, uh, poverty, a bunch of other things, leads to a bunch of different things. But at the, bottom, at the end of the day, the black community was responsible for that baby. More importantly, that woman was responsible for that baby. And you can't tell me that in the process of this child's nine-year life that this woman didn't show signs that something was wrong. You can't tell me in the nine years of this child's life that there weren't signs that she was being maltreated. This, this two-hour beating didn't just come out of anywhere, and it wasn't the first time. The system failed her, but that's the system. The system is meant to fail. The system is meant to be as horrible as it is. Let me tell you something, something that Marion and I both do. Uh, for those of you who don't know Marion is, Marion is my wife. And that's deal with human trafficking, sex trafficking. And what I can tell you is in the work we did, and we, we've done rescues, we've done rehabilitation, we've done therapy and intervention. Uh, but what I can tell you is this, one of the greatest breeding grounds are funnels into sex trafficking is the foster parent, the foster care system. So don't tell me about the system being able to help the kids. It's just as lethal and dangerous as what they're coming out of more times than not worse than what they're coming out of. I've, I've had some conversations over the last week just with people.
people who are trying to do something, people who are involved in one way or another, and the stuff that I'm hearing is blowing my mind. But anyway, and I and I've heard it, it's a thought, I've heard it and seen it all. But it's just it's just unbelievable. But anyway, this woman has beat this one this baby to death. And this isn't an anomaly. This isn't some abstract occurrence. This is a growing problem where our children are not protected. The question is, are we going to do something about it? Or are we just going to do what we normally do and go, oh my God, shaking my head. You know, I done, you know, went over this a million times, shaking my head. Uh, that's horrible. That's terrible. Somebody needs to do this to her. She needs to go rot in hell. She needs to spend the rest of her life. Somebody, whatever. Number one is, there's nothing we're going to do to get this baby's life back. But there's a lot we can do to reduce the number of children it happens to. And, and, and over time, decrease it, 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 it uh, immensely. But it's going to take work. It's going to take work in the community. It's going to take an awareness. It's going to take community involvement in community. We cannot expect a white system to save our black lives. we got to stop it. We have got to stop thinking that that system is going to save us and that system has never done anything that benefited us. We've got to quit. We're going to have to look inside of ourselves and say what's out there. There are programs out there. There are programs through the Odyssey Project that we offer that we can go in, we can provide mental health intervention, we can provide stress uh, intervention on the things that we literally are facing that make us edgy, make us more uh, likely to become violent. All of these different things uh, definitely are things that we need to be working on. And we have resources that we can give. We don't have the funding to put it out there. So again, we're asking for support. We're also looking for people who specialize in these areas, who can come in and lend a hand, uh, who can come in with ideas, because what we need are national resources. We need, no matter where you're at, you can call and say, hey, this is happening to me, I need help. You know, we need a situation where a parent has come to wit's end and said, you know what, I can't do this crap no more. I, I, I would rather have a resource for that parent to set up and say, hey, I'm surrendering my kids to the care of you guys. You can take over and do whatever you want to, but keeping the system out of it because the system is not prepared to take care of black children. So we need that. And don't tell me what we don't have and what we can't do. We are always flossing and talking about the stuff we're doing that brings nothing to the table in the, in, in the improvement of lives outside of us looking good and feeling good. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with taking care of yourself. You need to live this life. You only got one. So I'm not tripping on what I am saying. I'm not tripping on that, but what I am saying is we've got to do more than just be about ourselves. You know, we've got to be more about... One thing I tell people all the time, the first half of my life was about me. And I tell people, the first half of my life was about me. What I could do, what I could get, what I could drive, where I could live, where I could go. You know, how I could prove to people where I came from and where I'm at. But the second half of my life, thank God, is about my legacy. What am I going to leave behind in this world that is going to speak of me after I'm gone? What will be the impact that Rick Wallace has had on this world? I told you that this street was horrible. And it's just like, no matter what side you get on, this is what you're going to get. But I'm going to try to end this video quick. But anyway, uh, that is something that we've got to do. And that's just one thing. i got so many things on my notepad that we've got to go over that I've got to talk to you guys about in the next two days. It's mad crazy. And the community needs us to show up. The black community needs us to show up. The black community needs black people to handle black issues. We need to stop thinking about the government. The government isn't funding anything that works to help us. The government is funding, th funding things that look good. The government is funding things that have no real true intrinsic value but look good on the surface. That's real good for politics and uh, election time. That's real good for PR work for companies, but it doesn't do anything for us. If it did, we would be better off than what we are. We're going to have to fund it. We're going to have to be behind it. We're going to look at, look at how many times I've been telling you about the power of proper racial socialization for young black males. We started a program 
uh, a fundraising program specifically for black men lead in December. We just wanted to raise $10,000. That was in December. We haven't raised but $700. I get black boys and young black men brought to me daily. How far do you think that $700 went? And who do you think that falls on? I'm not complaining that it falls on me. I'm saying that I can't do but so much and there's so much more that needs to be done. For the brother, and I hope to hear from you soon. We talked and I haven't heard from you, but the brother Brian in, in Michigan uh, who volunteered to be a mentor. I hope to hear from you. Uh, I know we connected, we talked, and uh, I was excited about working with you. Definitely, we need more men who are willing to be mentors. Uh, we need uh, men who are willing to model manhood. They need to see what it looks like, what it looks like to be a man, to stand up even when things aren't looking the way you want to look and still be who you need to be in this world. That's what men do. And so there's so much we teach. And the number one principle of manhood, that, as I teach it, is to be a protector. And I talked about the five Ps of manhood, protector, provider, promoter, priest, and prophet. And I talked about that, but I tell every every young black boy, the first number one principle in the 11 principles of manhood is a man is a protector of women and children. And a man never brings harm to a woman, no matter what. Just that principle alone, instilled right, will change everything. You gotta set this up and understand. The second leading cause of death black females between the age of 15 and 44 is intimate partner violence. The vast majority of those partners are what? Black males. That's a problem and that's a solution to the problem. We should love one another enough to care about doing something about it. We need to deal with these parental issues where these parents are not prepared to be parents, are not built to be parents. That needs to be an outlet outside of the uh, American foster care system to bring these kids into, period. And I am not going to stop until I, I get the people on board that's willing to do something about it. We've got to care more about something than ourselves. I am. I believe in you work hard, you should be able to reap the benefits of your hard labor and live a life that is commensurate with that hard labor. But I also believe there's something else we need to be doing. I'm out of here. Got to go.